What is up, YouTube? Hey, welcome back to another video on House of Doula. As you guys know, we are kind of prepping the car uh, for Lone Star Fox Fest uh, for a quarter mile run. And one of the things we're gonna be installing on today is the quick latch here for the hood. These are quick latch hood pins. They're low profile and they snap right in like this. It's kind of an alternative to your standard stick up hood pins. But um, as much as I hate to admit, I never wanted to put these on the car. I just don't like the look. I think that it looks so much cleaner with nothing on it. Um, it just looks so much smoother with nothing on it. But it's necessary, guys. I've seen too many hoods fly up, um, especially fiberglass. Even though this is a thick fiberglass hood, it's just like a Cervini, real close to a Cervini hood. Um, they can still unlatch and fold up, especially when you're going pretty fast on the highway. Nonetheless, with T-tops and you know, what would happen is this thing flipped up, it would obviously ruin my cow. It would ruin the hood, you know, shatter the windshield and the Boston bus. It's just not worth it. So just really for safety's sake, I'm gonna install these guys on it. Okay guys, what I've got here are quick latches um, from Amazon. Now, I know what you're gonna say. Yeah, some of these are really, really cheap. Um, but however, the alternative for paying for the American brand ones, guys, the American ones are like $130 or something. Um, I just didn't want to spend that. And anything is going to be helpful since I'm not removing my hood latch. Um, these actually are pretty nice. These are uh, Steshin. I think these are not the cheapest, but they were like 40 bucks for the pair. And I admit I've already put one on the other side just to show you guys how to do it. But I wanted to at least show you guys how it came in the box here. Uh, not much really to it. It comes with a bag of hardware. This comes with some set screws. It comes with a pin. The pin is actually really nice quality. Um, it's a lot thicker than I thought it would be. And you can see it's pretty nice. It doesn't have a seam down it. Um, I've seen some of the cheaper ones that are a little bit thinner than this. And you got the latch itself. And the latch itself is made of aluminum. Um, it's obviously a matte finish. And it is actually pretty nice. It's got a ring on it. This is how it obviously attaches to the hood. And it's even got a rubber grommet. I don't know if you can see that in there, but it has a rubber grommet. So this part, when it sits up against the hood, it's not, you know, moving around and scratching it. Um, yeah, so it's spring-loaded. And how these work is they take place of the bump stop. They snap in like this. It has a real nice, satisfying snap. I'm not going to lie. But um, it's really strong. It has a spring load for the down, just like your uh, bump stops kind of would. But does not have any play coming up at all. And then to release it, you simply push and it pops out just like that so these in my opinion were some of the coolest looking ones um, that I was willing to at least put on my car however do note this takes a pretty decent size hole so guys you are going to be cutting into your hood whether you like it or not um, that's true for any hood pins it's just the hole is going to be quite a bit bigger because you have to cut it for this and you'll see in just a second I have to cut it for the back side of the fiberglass hood to also accommodate for the ring here so Let's get to it. Okay guys, the tools for this is obviously going to depend um, really on what kind of hood you have. In my case, I have a fiberglass hood and because of that, you'll see why in a second I need two hole saws um, because the fiberglass hood is two layer and it's so thick that it's not, it doesn't have enough meat uh, to go through. So we actually have to drill a hole larger than the ring is uh, that, that screws down from the bottom side on one of the, the bottom side layer of the uh, fiberglass hood. So in my case, you're gonna need a um, sort of a screwdriver probably um, to help pry off the uh, bump stop clips. Um, in this case, this is optional for my hood, but for my hood, I needed a one and a half, or I'm sorry, I needed a two and a half inch hole saw. Um, no matter what, you're gonna need a one and a half inch hole saw as well, no matter whether your hood is steel or fiberglass, a cutoff wheel, and of course a drill for it. And optional in my case is a welder, so I'm going to be using the welder and a grinder uh, to put on the stud on the bump stop location. Okay, so again, this installation really does depend on how you want to do it, how you like the look, and on what kind of, um, you know, what type of hood you have. I personally think the location with the bump stop is the best spot, and I'll show you why, just because of the way my hood is, and also just got, I think, in the location of it when the hood is closed, this area right on the front of it looks best to me versus some people, you know, you can see them back here, even you know, way back here, up here. I don't know. You can make a bracket here if you wanted to. So you just kind of use your own judgment and depending on the type of hood you have is going to kind of dictate it. So make note that these do have a certain amount of rooms depending on what type style of hood you have and what type it is and the material that it's made out of, make sure you know what the thickness is. You could buy these that are longer uh, to accommodate for thicker, you know, 
thicker hoods or whatnot, but in my case, that would have brought it down too close to the bottom of the, the uh, core support. So what I'm gonna do here is just kind of show you guys uh, roughly about how much room you have. So that's about 16 and a quarter, or about 16.3 uh, millimeter inches. That's about, uh, let's see here, 0.6. So it's about 0.6 inches um, with enough space to get some threads on. You can go a little bit more if you were to back the threads out, but you want to make sure this ring, you know, is, is at least on a full uh, set of threads here. So you can take the grommet off if you want it, but that's about all you get, guys. So 0.6. Okay, looking up, looking up at the bottom of the hood here, you can see I've got a perfect little divot here for a bump stop, but nothing else around it is at all in a flat type shape. So if you were worrying using like a standard hood pin, this would be perfect. You can punch a hole straight this and go out both sides. This is a two layer uh, fiberglass hood. This is real similar to the Cervini hood. It's actually pretty heavy. Uh, the bottom layer is really thick. So I've already measured this. So I took a kind of like a makeshift caliper and <laughs> I was able to measure the inside of this bump here and the outside here. And it's still just a little bit too thick um, for this to go all the way through. And even if so, it wouldn't work because the ring sits on the outside of this. You can see here that the ring you know, wouldn't fit inside this hole. It would actually sit right on the outside of this. So if you're measuring, I would have to measure from the outside of this location up to the top of the hood itself. And when I did that, it was well above the uh, size we have here. So the only way to make this work properly is to just basically cut the hole out here larger. And this is gonna sandwich between the first layer of the fiberglass hood. So the fiberglass hood, as you know, is two layers. So you've got the top layer and you have the bottom layer. And this is gonna sandwich between just the top layer and like I said before, I think that'll be plenty, uh, plenty, that'll be plenty uh, of support with the uh, hood latch on as well. So first thing we need to do is get this bump stop out. All right, there we go. So what I'm talking about is these little tabs right here. This folds over and holds the cage nut in place. Um, so what we're going to do is just kind of cut right there on the tabs enough or this will pop out. <laughs> There's one. <laughs> okay, you can see the top one. As soon as I cut that little tiny tab, that little top plate just flew off. So now this cage nut is kind of set in there um, just like so. So what you can do is you can, you can pry under it and pop it off because the hole behind it is just a rectangle. Um, or we can cut right here just to loosen it up. And I'm going to go ahead and do that just to make it easy to pop out. Okay, that may have loosened it enough for it to pop it out. So let's see if it'll just pop out now. Boop. Okay, just like that. So now we have a, so now we got a triangle area here. Um, this is where we're gonna install the, uh, the pin in. It comes with enough, um, it comes with four total. So you get two uh, nuts and two washers per pin. So what you can do is you can wall this out just a little bit um, and you can actually sandwich it and you could be good um, doing that. You could just screw this down, put it inside the hole here put the other nut and washer on the opposite side and sandwich it between this rectangle, and that would be good enough. I just wanted to weld it on uh, just to make this stud um, permanent and to allow this to be adjustable, and then we'll use the other nut as a lock. So what I'm gonna do here, actually we'll, we can leave that on, but what we have to do now is just open this hole up just a little bit more. Now, one of the tools I didn't even tell you about, so yeah, how you open this hole up, um, that is kind of up to you guys. You can use a file and just, you can see how close it is. It's very close, but you just wanna get a file and kind of round out these edges. I wanna go and get my Dremel tool and just round it out. I think it'll be a little bit quicker. Okay, it's painted black. Looks a little bit better, I guess. We're gonna go ahead and screw this back in all the way down here. Yeah, a little bit more, so about right here. Now, don't, there, guys, just make sure that, you know, your headlight buckets may be different than mine. Um, mine have plenty of room underneath here and I also made sure there wasn't wiring on it. I forgot to mention that. Make sure you don't have some wires, you know, obviously laying up against you if you're gonna weld it. That's gonna go down as far as about that one is right there. Hey right, guys, so what I wanna do now is check the relationship between this one and this one. And the best way to do that in my case is just make sure that the ball is hitting the center of the cup here on the top 
of the hood. The hood itself has a nice concave area for the um, for the bump stop. And on this side, I want to make I made sure that this pin, the top of the pin, was right kind of in the center of the center of that cup on the hood. So I just want to make sure I do that on this side as well. And to do that, I also want to make sure they're kind of the same height. So I measured, and both these are about two inches are really right on at two inches uh, from the core support up to the top. And what we're gonna do is take a little bit of thread sealant. This is what I used last time on the radiator, but we're gonna put just a dab here right on the top of it, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do is just kind of close the hood. Ooh, ah, yeah. Release the hood latch here, so it just falls right down. There we go. Seeing it sitting right on it, it's nice and solid. We'll lift it up. Yep, and we'll see where it's at now. I remember the other one being almost dead center, except maybe just a little bit towards the top of the hood. And this is looking exactly the same. So that means the core support's nice and straight, right? But um, nonetheless, there is our mark and guys, We'll leave that alone down here and that's where we drill yeah. all right guys here goes nothing now remember it's all a little bit adjustable but there's no going back here once there's a hole in your hood there's a hole in your hood man there's no going back so i'm cognizant here of just where my drill bit is you don't want to drill in the hood like this because you know, you're going to put your hole way over here when it should be right here so you want to make sure that it is level to the angle of the way the hood is open that's what we're doing. Okay, no going back now. That's where it's gonna go. All right, I tell you what we're gonna do. We're just gonna make sure really gently here that just a half, four and a half. Phew, man, thank goodness. <laughs> That's nerve wracking. Yeah, these are just um, right over uh, four and a half on Look perfect. That looks identical from side to side. Now you can also check this way. You should be good. That's four and a quarter. Dead center of this hole here. And four and a quarter. I don't know if you can see that, but that's four and a quarter. So yeah, I think we're centered. Now that you committed, there's no going back. Now I do want to say the first hole you want to put in is the big one. Um, we are going to put this straight through the pilot hole and we're going to drill out the entire area on only the bottom layer. Do not go through both layers. You know this, right? That would screw the whole thing up. Now you'd have a two and a half inch hole on the other side. I don't know what you do with that. Maybe run your exhaust through it or something. But um, we are simply going to get a mask on now because this is fiberglass. And then what we're going to do here is uh, get the vacuum going because this is going to make a mess. And we want to make sure that I don't get all over my engine here. You don't want to breathe fiberglass. Okay. Right. There we go. So that makes a nice clean cut. Obviously, to make sure I went all the way through. So now what we're going to do is take the smaller um, one and a half inch and we'll cut through this hole and we should be ready to install it. Cool, so what we're gonna do now is just test fit it. Just like that. Now on the back side, I've got perfect amount of room here for the ring. Okay, so with these quick latch style, um, you know, obviously they screw into a ring here. Dude, I'm just telling you, I thought about this, that it is super easy to accidentally drop this ring into the bowels of your cow hood, and then you'd be finding ways to take your hood off to fish it out. So don't do that. Um, just be careful whenever you put these in. If you got a cow hood like mine, kind of maybe put your finger in the middle here just so it doesn't, uh, doesn't slip out. And then just try to get it started by lifting up and rotating the top like this. There we go. So once I got my thread started, I can tighten it up. We're not going to go all the way tight because I'm going to take it back off to remove the tape. And then we'll put the set screws in it, and then we'll put some... Uh, Loctite on it. So we're going to tighten that down like this and uh, let's just go ahead and test it. Okay. 
Okay, I did just like I did on the other one, and I applied just a dab of Loctite on the threads here. And we're gonna screw this thing down. Okay, now the kit came with some set screws. The ring itself has some set screws in it. You wanna be really careful with this, especially on fiberglass, but I do like the idea of having a set screw kind of in there with some pressure on the threads to keep it from backing out. So I'm gonna really kind of carefully put two of these in. It comes with three different lengths, two um, of each length for each side. So it comes with a pretty decent um, amount of it. I'm just going to put a little bit of twist on it. I don't want to overdo this because I don't want to crack the fire glass. And I definitely want to make sure, you know, we don't put so much pressure on it. It cracks the paint, you know, or the fire glass in here. So all this is really doing is putting pressure down on the threads to help it keep from backing out. One would be sufficient, uh, but I'm putting two in it. Okay, so now you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So it does have a set screw in there. I've got two in there. So I know what you're thinking. I know what you're going to tell me right now is that opening and closing this is probably going to cause uh, stretch fractures, stress fractures in the fiberglass. And it very well could. We're going to keep an eye on it. Now I've talked to another gentleman. In fact, uh, someone on Instagram, and I apologize, I don't recall the name, but very helpful. Um, he has a Cervini hood. He kind of gave me a heads up before I did mine. He had to do the same thing as far as drilling through the, uh, you know, the first layer to get to the top layer. I had to put these in, but he actually reinforced it with an electrical um, conduit ring. So the ring itself would be, you know, about that big and steel, and then you would have a, uh, you know, one and a half inch hole in the middle and then he would reinforce the backside of it. Now, I may actually have to do that. I didn't want to do that because I didn't have to, really the room uh, to cut in here. I didn't want to cut this hole any bigger since I'm already into this curve right here. So, you know, that being said, there's still maybe a different way where I could put something back in here to help, you know, put the force load across a more surface area. But you're not going to be slamming this thing. You know, just, just know that these pins are here and that, you know, you don't want to cut your fiberglass. Just be careful. That's all I'm saying. But anyways, yeah, it's done. That's it. Uh, we're gonna kind of clean up the fiberglass. Let's close the hood and see how it looks. I forgot to tighten the jam nut. So be careful, get the first latch down and we'll push down just like that. Now all three are latched and there we go. Man, I don't know guys, what do you think? Yay or nay, love it, hate it. I'll tell you my opinion. Not in love, <laughs> but they are necessary. I do now feel much safer knowing that these are here um, as I'm hauling butt down the freeway because I always had that thought in the back of my mind this thing was going to fly up on me because um, I've seen it happen and it's not pretty. But I think for what it is, it's a really good set and looks good on the car. It matches the look of the car and uh, they're definitely not in your face. And they're not, you know, they're not quite as old school looking like your pins are over here on the Trino, your traditional. Uh, push all the way through pins with cables. This looks good on this car. It looks pretty correct. So, yeah. All right, to open it, forgot to show you guys, you know, like you normally would. So unlatch your hood release. And then what you do is just take the sides here, push down on both of them, and it pops up just like that. And then that's it. Grab a regular hood release, so it's, it definitely clicks on. Just like this, and that's it, and it's solid, man. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Hey, listen, love it or hate it, let me know. Um, let me know if you think I did a horrible job installing it. <laughs> let me know, guys. Hey, either way, it's there for safety. It really is. That is the sole purpose of this. I don't want my hood flying up and causing a wreck, or causing a wreck behind it, either, either way. This is a fiberglass hood. You wanna make sure they're in place. Um, and it is definitely strong now. It's not going anywhere. I mean, it is like, it's latched. So I feel good about it. We got three latches on it now, so I'm not ever gonna take off the uh, center latch. But hey, follow me on Instagram. Uh, subscribe to get more notifications and uh, stay tuned for more content. And stay tuned for the uh, store opening up on YouTube. You'll be able to go to store and buy some how to do a swag if you wanna support the Fox Body, especially the four hour Fox Body Love. And you wanna support the channel, um, that would be much appreciated. So guys, thank you so much. Have a great day and we'll talk to you next time. Take care.